Tim, uh, panoramic resources, the nickel price has been one of the most unloved of the base metals, but then again, they are kind of gearing up for gold production alongside that. So just put it into context. That's right. Uh, panoramic resources have been hit by a falling nickel price as well as a, a high Aussie dollar, which has seen their net profit fall. They came in with a net loss of around $18 million, which was pretty much on guidance that the company had uh, given the market. Now, nickel production was up 16%, but as mentioned, their average price received for their nickel has fallen around 23% from their full year 2011 result. That's fallen from $11 a pound down to around $8.50 a pound, and that's really hit their margins and really hit their profit. Profit levels. Uh, the higher Aussie dollar as well, impairment charges as well as uh, corporate acquisition costs have all come into this loss that they've recorded today. As mentioned, they are diversifying into the gold sector. Last year they bought into the Gigi Gold project. They've also bought interests into uh, Mount Henry and Thunder Bay Gold projects. Now these projects do have quite a bit of development to be done, but the company is aiming for around 100,000 ounces of gold production within around two years. Uh, of course, the earnings season at the moment, uh, a lot, the market's very focused on the outlook given by companies. Now, they certainly were quite cautious in the sh short term surrounding both the economy and what this will mean for commodity prices, but their full year 2013 production guidance was unchanged. They're saying nickel production 18 to 19,000 ounces. Uh, tons which will actually be below what they've produced for this full year so they are cautious on the nickel price nickel price has suffered significantly there's significant cost inflation in the mining sector at the moment but these gold projects are helping with diversification for the company away from nickel hey, uh, I get a feeling it'll be one of those days where we say uh, kind of no change or flatlining right through the session um, anything to give us particular direction well, it is going to be a very flat start again today. Um, thankfully, we do have these company earnings to talk about. Uh, certainly, there was not much movement on the U.S. market overnight. And volumes, trading volumes have been very low on offshore markets as well. We've seen uh, on both U.S. and European markets trading volumes sort of 25% below monthly averages over the past couple of days. And the volumes here in the, on the ASX have been very light as well. On Monday, we only saw 3.4 billion traded. Yesterday, only 3.6 billion traded. And this really highlights that investors are just very cautious at the moment, just waiting to get through this week as there's a couple of big central bank movements to come, the Fed on uh, at the end of this week and of course the ECB meeting coming up in early September which the market will be focused on as well. But there are fewer earnings reports today than there have been other days this week so we are in, probably in for a little bit of a quieter day today. Uh, I think the view in the market, there's sort of increasing view that QE3 or further easing is not going to be announced by Ben Bernanke at the end of the week. So that's seen the Aussie dollar commodity prices sort of coming off recently. Energy actually broke four days of uh, losses last night, rising around 1%. So the energy sector might perform a bit better today. Uh, but again, yeah, a very quiet day on the market.